In this video, we're going to paint textures on our sculpted model, and we're going to bake the texture maps. So we can use the no polygon mesh with the high resolution textures in the game engine. All right, so let's get started. So first, we're going to save this uh, model box file to a new file as a step six paint textures. And uh, we're going to um, create a paint layer, and we're going to paint a blue color on the whole body. So this will be the base color for the rat. And then we're going to create a new pin layer. And for this new layer, you can uh, get a orange color. So we're going to pin the base color for the nose. And we're also going to pin the base color for the mouth. Okay, for the food, we can use a darker uh, bluish color and we can load a stencil image, a noise image, and use that image as a mask so we can paint some noise on the character's food. Then here we're going to add a new pin layer, base color 3. And we're going to use a darker bluish color and paint around the eye. So we can also use the noise as the mask. So we can paint some textures. So if you don't like some texture, uh, you can use the eraser tool to erase the textures you have painted. And you can also turn on the flat lighting to check the color you have painted. Thank you. 
Then here we're going to open the uh, step 4 UV unwrap. So for this step we have uh, unfolded all the UVs. So here we're going to select the body mesh and we're going to export the UV map. So for this UV map we're going to use it to create the base texture for our meshes. Okay, so we're going to also export the UV snapshot for the shirt and for the pants. And then we're going to drop in the UV map and uh, here we're going to drop in a texture. Then we'll save our texture image. And in Malbox, right click at the near panel and import layer. So we're going to import this uh, skin based texture and import it to the diffuse channel. And then you can play with a different blending mode like a multiply, overlay, or a screen. And I kind of feel overlay blending mode works great. And you can also change its opacity uh, lower it down. Uh, so it keeps the textures and also keep the bluish color. So we'll switch to the projection tool and make sure to set the color as a white color. So you're going to project 100% opacity of the texture image. So we're going to load a stencil image. Uh, for the nose texture and uh, you can check on or off the mirror depends on you know, if you want the texture to be symmetry or not and then we can draw the texture on our mesh and you can also change the blending mode to multiply so you're going to multiply the nose texture onto the color Then here we'll uh, load a texture image for the inner side of the mouth and we're going to project the texture image onto the mesh. So you can create a new layer so um, it gives you some more freedom uh, to, to edit the layer and edit the color of the texture you have painted. And uh, here I leave the symmetry, uh, the mirror on because it doesn't matter if uh, uh, the texture is a symmetry or not, since it's the inside of the mouth.
we're going to create a new uh, pen layer and we're going to switch back to the paint brush and you can choose a, a reddish color and we're going to paint some shadows uh, in the mouth so change the cut, uh, layer blending mode to multiply and here you can also um, uh, select a, a stamp so basically for the stamp here in model box is like uh, the brush uh, in Photoshop as you can see I kind of painted with uh, this type of uh, dry brush um, texture so basically I selected a, a noise brush uh, a noise stamp On the edge of the mouth, you can paint some darker bluish color. And then you can right click on the layer and go to adjust the layer. Um, uh, and uh, lower down is saturation because the red color I painted is kind of a, a little bit too saturated so I just lower down the saturation and here I'm going to rename all of the layers and I'll create a new uh, pen layer uh, so on this layer I'm going to paint texture on the hand
And then we're going to pin some water texture on our character's pants and clothes. So here we're going to create a new pin there. And uh, go to the pin brush and we're going to select a uh, light grayish color. So here you can turn off the mirror um, if you want the texture not be symmetry. And also check the blending mode as multiply. So we're going to paint some water on the character's pants. Uh, it can be either because the weather you know, is a uh, rainy weather or it can be our character sweated. Then we'll paint some reflections, which is specular maps on our character's pants. So here we're going to create a new texture layer and channel we're going to set as a specular. So we're going to create a layer on the specular channel. And uh, we're going to set the color as pure black. And as I paint the pure black on this layer, you're going to remove all of the reflections because for a specular map, black color uh, area is going to remove all of the reflections. And then we're going to duplicate this water color layer and move it to the specular channel and change the blend mode to normal. So for the place we have painted water, it's going to have reflections. And same thing for the shirt. Then we'll move on to the body mesh. And here we're going to create a new layer and uh, for a specular channel. And for the reflection on the body, uh, instead of using a pure black color, I'm going to use a dark gray color and paint uh, the whole mesh. So this will be, um, you know, it will remove most of the reflection, but keep a little reflection on the skin. And here we're going to create a new layer in the specular channel. So basically on this layer, we're going to paint um, some light gray color or medium gray color. So for this area I painted, it will have some reflections. Because as you know, uh, for the face, uh, it will have some oil. For the area that has the oil or has water, it's going to reflect lights. And definitely for the inside of the mouth, we're going to uh, paint some light gray color to make it to reflect lights. And uh, inside inner ear, we have to paint some reflections.
and then this is the finished look of our textures. And then we'll export our textures. So you can go to uh, each model and go to the diffuse map, right click on the diffuse folder uh, and uh, export the channel merge. So you're going to export all of the texture together. And same thing for spectrum channel, right click and export the channel merged. And then you can select the mesh and go to extract texture maps. And we're gonna export the normal map. So remember for here, because for the body mesh, the pants, the shirt, they all have uh, overlap the UVs. So you want to export the texture map of each model. Okay. So here for uh, matter, we will use a subdivision and image size as a 2048. And we're gonna export as a body normal map one because later on we're going to have other normal map and we're going to merge the normal maps together. And for the shirt, same thing, we're going to export the whole diffuse channel. And same thing for the specular channel. For the shirt and the pants, the normal maps, uh, this is the base normal map. So we're going to mark it as blue color um, because we're going to add it. And here we're going to go to uh, Crazy Bump. Uh, we're going to drop in the pants uh, base texture. So, so for this base texture, we have used it for the cloth texture, right? So we're going to just use this texture to generate the cloth normal map and save it. And also for the shirt base texture, we're going to bring it to Crazy Bump and generate a normal map for the uh, for the shirt texture. Um, and if you don't have a Crazy Bump on your computer, you can just use a Photoshop. So just drag a uh, layer into Photoshop and go to 3D and generate to uh, generate normal map. And you can keep everything by the default and click on OK and you will have a nice normal map. Okay, once, once you have done this, uh, you can bring in the normal map for the pants, uh, merge all of them together. And for the uh, cloth texture layer, you can um, drop down its opacity to about 50% or 12%. And save these two layers together as one layer, so that will be the final normal map. And same thing for the shirt normal maps. So just bring them together and uh, lower down the opacity of the, uh, the cloth texture and save them together. So now we will have our final texture maps and uh, you can bring them into the Maya file which is a step 4 UV unwrapped and um, for the three materials you have created and you can uh, import all of the texture maps. And then if you are doing animation in Maya, uh, your model is ready for ringing and for animation.
Okay, so since this is just a preview in Maya, so it may show the hard edge, uh, which is the texture border, but uh, when you do full render, uh, it will disappear. And for the eyeball, we can just uh, bring in the diffuse map in Photoshop and we can um, just make the texture for the eyeball. Because uh, this is more accurate than you paint the eyeball texture in Malbox. And this piece is the side of the eyeball, and this piece is the back side of the eyeball. So you can just uh, feel a kind of reddish color. And then you can um, put all of these layers as a, into a folder, diffuse, and this will be the final diffuse map. And for the specular map, um, you can just copy the eyeball layers and bring it on top of the specular and uh, uh, increase the, uh, the brightness to the pure white color. And then when you update these texture maps, it will show the textures and the speculars. And for the eyeball, we can just make a duplication and uh, make sure a freeze transformation and delete its history before we move forward. And then select the duplicate uh, model, put it in a folder and flip it to the other side. And once you're done, also remember to freeze transformation and delete history. You can also use this workflow to create the teeth and uh, the tongue. I haven't demonstrated this in this video, but uh, it's the same technique. All right, and uh, if you are using your model in game engines and you can uh, just export your model to a FVX file and with the final texture maps you have, you will be able to use your model in any game engine.